Welcome to the Manassas Regional Airport's non-movement training course. The purpose of this course is to ensure that those individuals requiring non-movement area access are properly trained to operate on taxi lanes, aprons, and on the airport safely and in accordance with the airport's rules and regulations. Access to the airport and operating on the non-movement area is a privilege and may be revoked at any time. The Manassas Regional Airport is a general aviation airport and a designated reliever airport for the Washington, D.C. metro area. The airport is home to a variety of operations, flight schools, maintenance stations, charter companies, research and development firms, and full-service fixed-based operators. General aviation airports like Manassas do not offer any scheduled airline service. The airport is divided into two basic areas, movement areas and non-movement areas. Movement areas are designed for the movement of aircraft under the guidance of air traffic control. To enter that movement area, you must have permission from air traffic control. An example of movement areas include runways, taxiways, safety areas, and run-up blocks. Please note, all run-up blocks except for the runway 16 left run-up block are in the movement area. Additional training and authorization is required in order to operate on the movement area. Contact airport operations for more information. Non-movement areas are all other areas of the airport not under the control of the air traffic control tower. You do not need permission from air traffic control to operate on a non-movement area. Examples include hangar driveways, aprons, perimeter roads, taxi lanes, and the runway 16 left run-up block. Aircraft always have the right-of-way on a taxi lane. Taxi lanes are not meant for vehicle convenience. Individuals should utilize public roads whenever possible to get to their destination on the airport. The dividing line between a movement, non-movement area is represented by a single solid line along with solid dashed yellow lines. When you are positioned on the solid line side of the marking or the non-movement area, clearance is required for you to drive into the movement area. You must have permission from air traffic control in order to proceed. If you find yourself on the other side of this marking, proceed through the dashes. Remember, stop at the solid, move through the dashes. If you are positioned on this marking, you have already entered the movement area. Taxiways are used by aircraft to get to and from the ramp and the runway. Taxiways have yellow markings and blue lights, which help differentiate them from runways. Authorization is required to operate on taxiways. Runways are marked with white numbers at each end, white stripes down the middle, and white lines on the edges. Lighting is an important indicator on a runway. Runways are marked with white lights. Two-sided lights, amber and white, are used on the last 2,000 feet of an instrument runway. At the end of the runway, you may see runway threshold lights, two-sided red and green lights. If you see amber or red lights, you may be approaching the end of the runway. Hold position markings divide the taxiway from the runway boundary. This is also considered the outer limit of the runway safety area. Hold position markings are represented by double solid yellow lines with two dashed lines. These markings are also paired with a runway holding position sign indicating the runway you are holding from. You must always have permission from air traffic control prior to crossing the hold short line from the solid line side. Remember, move through the dashes, stop at the solids. If you are positioned on this marking, you have entered the runway environment. There are four types of airfield signs, mandatory instruction, location, direction, and runway distance remaining. Mandatory instruction signs have white letters with a red background. These signs are associated with a required action. For example, you are holding position at runway 34 right at taxiway Bravo 2 and need clearance from air traffic control in order to proceed onto the runway. Location signs have yellow letters with a black background and use letter number combinations for designators. They indicate taxiway location, runway location, or the runway boundary. They tell you where you are. Direction signs have black letters with a yellow background. 
They tell you where taxiways are located and where you are to go. Runway distant remaining signs have white letters with a black background. They are typically located on a precision runway and indicate how many feet are left on the runway. They are designated in thousands of feet. The speed limit for all vehicles operating on the non-movement area is 15 miles per hour. Speed limits along the perimeter roads are posted. Scooters, bicycles, and strollers are not allowed inside the airport. Vehicles operating on the airport must be maintained in general sound mechanical condition to prevent breakdowns and excessive leaking of fluids. All headlights, tail lights, turn signals, brake lights, and hazard lights must be fully operational. Before entering the non-movement area, all vehicles must be operating with their hazards turned on. Support vehicles such as golf carts, forklifts, tugs, and construction vehicles must be equipped with a beacon. Beacons must be visible from all directions and be amber or yellow in color. Beacons can be flashing or steady burning. All vehicles operating on the airport should have a window cracked down to assist in hearing. Operating aircraft may not always be visible. Aircraft may approach from above. Watch and listen for lights and sirens from emergency response vehicles. Emergency vehicles have the right of way. Individuals should not block or park near vehicle gates. This may impede on the response time of emergency responders. Be careful and maintain a safe distance when working around parked aircraft. Do not proceed behind a running aircraft. This can result in you getting hurt or damage to your vehicle. Vehicles shall not be driven within 15 feet of an aircraft unless directly involved in servicing or responding to an aircraft emergency. Aircraft cockpit windows are designed for pilots to see other aircraft. It can be difficult or impossible for the flight crew of large aircraft to see vehicles, particularly behind the wings and directly below the cockpit. When it is safe, make yourself visible in front of the aircraft. Vehicles must yield to all aircraft. When operating at night, display your front and back tail lights and keep your headlights on low beam. Allow yourself extra time and drive slower than normal. All drivers should display extra courtesy to taxiing aircraft by angling their vehicles so that headlight beams do not directly impact cockpit areas. It takes approximately 30 minutes for pilots to adjust to night conditions. Know the signs of a starting or moving aircraft. Aircraft are equipped with lighting systems to indicate their location and operation. Anti-collision lights are flashing white or red lights located on the tail or body of the aircraft. They indicate that the pilot is getting ready to start the aircraft or the aircraft is already operating. Landing lights, which are solid white, are used for taxiing, taking off, or landing. They are located on the front or wings of an aircraft. Position lights give an indication on the orientation of the aircraft. They are solid red or green, located on the tips of the wings. When an aircraft is taxiing right to left, vehicle operators will see a red light. When an aircraft is taxiing left to right, vehicle operators will see a green light. Always assume that if the aircraft lights are on, that it is in operation. If you are unsure of an aircraft's movement, stop, assess the situation, then proceed accordingly. When driving in inclement weather, be extra cautious about your surroundings. Drive at a reduced speed and give yourself plenty of time to get to your destination. Always consider using the perimeter roads to get to your destination. Never drive on the airport while using a cell phone, texting, or engaging in unnecessary conversations. Distracted driving is a nationwide problem. Don't be distracted on an airport. The airport is responsible for environmental compliance. It is a requirement that all spills are reported to the appropriate agencies. Report any spills of any kind to airport operations at 703-361-5488. Vehicle pedestrian deviations are defined as a pedestrian or vehicle entering any portion of the airport movement areas without authorization from air traffic control. Vehicle pedestrian deviations are divided into two categories, runway incursions and surface incidents. 
Runway incursions are defined as any occurrence at an aerodrome involving the incorrect presence of an aircraft, vehicle, or person on the protected area of a surface designated for the landing and takeoff of aircraft. Runways are meant for aircraft use. Never drive a vehicle on it unless you are properly trained and authorized to do so. Surface incidents are defined as unauthorized or unapproved movement within the designated movement areas, excluding runway incursions, or any occurrence in that same area associated with the operation of an aircraft that affects or could affect the safety of flight. Any individual involved in a runway incursion or a surface incident will receive a notice of violation and may result in loss of gate card movement area access. Remedial ground vehicle training will be mandatory in order to reinstate privileges. Drive safely. Be aware of your surroundings. If you witness an aircraft accident, contact 911. Notify airport operations. Stay clear of the scene and movement areas. Airport operations can be reached at 703-361-5488. No person shall access the airport through vehicle gates unless he or she is in possession of a valid gate card or is under escort by a gate card holder. When entering through an airport gate, stop and allow the gate to close completely behind you before proceeding. If a gate fails to close, contact airport operations before leaving the gate. The number to airport operations can be found on the back of your gate card. Only one vehicle is allowed to pass through an open gate at a time. Card holders, tenants, and franchise holders are responsible for any visitors or employees who enter the airfield under their escort. No person shall piggyback through an airport gate. Report any vehicle or pedestrian gate malfunction, breaks in perimeter fencing, or other secured areas to airport operations. Watch out for suspicious vehicles or trucks. If you see something, say something. Call 911. Notify airport operations. If it is a non-emergency issue, contact Manassas City Police at 703-257-8000 or Airport Operations at 703-361-5488. City Police and Airport Operations can be reached 24 hours a day. Foreign object debris, or FOD, can ruin an aircraft engine and even destroy the aircraft. Anything that does not belong on the paved airfield is considered FOD. This could be rocks, tools, paper, even dead animals and birds. Check your vehicle for mud or loose debris before entering the airport. It is everyone's responsibility to clean as you go. If there is FOD on the movement area or any area you cannot reach, report this to airport operations. Upon passing this course, you may apply for a gate card. Gate cards are issued on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Gate cards for non-movement area access are valid for two years. The replacement fee for a lost, broken, or stolen gate card is $35. If a gate card is stolen and a police report is provided, this fee may be waived. Drivers operating vehicles on the airport must have an airport badge and a valid driver's license issued by a recognized state or agency on them at all times. Individuals with a gate card may escort visitors aboard the airport. Individuals are responsible for the actions of all of their visitors while on the airport. Visitors must always be under sight and voice control. This concludes the non-movement area training course. Please proceed to the non-movement driver training test.